Welcome. This unit now is over checking accounts. So before we do that, let's look at our previous uh, lesson over population. This is a survey. Four people chose dog as their favorite animal. Five chose cat. Ten people chose horse. Six people chose a fish. This is a sample of students' favorite pet. If there are 300 students at the school, how many would choose dog? I'm going to make a table. Whoop. I'm going to make a table. So they want us to find how many would choose dog out of students. So this is a sample. In this sample, four people chose dog out of a total of, let's see, 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 plus 19 plus out of 25 students. So four people chose selected dog as their favorite pet out of 25 students. They want you to build this relationship to 300 students. That's the total population of the stucco. Or so what is the relationship? What is the relationship from 25 to 3? Hundred. What's the relationship? 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, 275, 300. The relationship is times 12. The relationship is times 12. So about, if I built this relationship, I could make a ratio table of 8 people select a dog out of 50. I can do 12 people chose dog out of 75. I could have chosen 16 out of 100 students, but that would have taken a while. I'd rather multiply by a scale factor of 12. So 48 will select dog out of 300 students. So let's look at our do now. How many, this is about people's favorite movie type. 12 people chose drama, 3 people chose foreign, 20 people chose comedy, 15 chose action. How many people did Jeremy use for his sample? If I add all of this up, 12 plus 3 is 15, plus 20, that's 35, plus 15 more, that's 50. So he, he chose 50 people in his sample. If Jeremy were to survey 250 people, how many would you predict would name comedy? So let's see. This is about comedy comedy people in his survey 20 people chose comedy out of 50 people if i had to build this relationship to 250 people what is the relationship from 50 to 250 times 5 times 5 so 100 would choose comedy out of 250 people so consumers open checking accounts at banks or credit unions to keep their money safe. I know I do. When the account owner puts money into their account, it is called a deposit. What mathematical operation does a deposit represent? When you put money into the banking or financial institution, you're adding money to it. Name some different ways to deposit money into a account. If I had all this money and I want to keep it safe, what are different ways I can go deposit? I can deposit through an ATM. I know I do that several times. Like instead of going talking to the to the uh, bank teller, I don't want to wait in line. I just put my ATM card, type in my four-digit PIN code or personal identification code, and I select the deposit feature. Another way I can deposit money is do work called direct deposit. Most of your parents have this. When I was a kid, I remember my father, every Friday or every other Friday, he would get a check. Then Friday after work or Saturday morning, he would go to the bank, stand in line, and deposit his check. Nowadays, everything is through electronic. It's through the computer system. So sometimes your parents say, oh, I got paid. Transfer money from savings. So a lot of people have two types of account, a checking account and a savings account. Like some of you may have a college savings account. So you put money in your savings account, and then when you need it, you transfer it into your checking account. So you have money to pay for college book, tuition, or so on. And another way is actually go to the bank and deposit a check or cash. You see some of your parents may wait in a long line. They fill out a deposit form, and they stand next to the teller and say, I'm going to deposit a check. 
when the account owner takes money out of the account, it is called a withdrawal. What mathematical operation does a withdrawal represent? It means subtract. Name some different ways you can take money out of your account. Again, let's do the ATM. Because I know uh, once a week, I go. To, I don't want to wait in line, so I go to the ATM and I do a fast withdrawal. Some of your parents may do that. They're, they're in their car. They don't want to get out of their car, so they go to an ATM machine and uh, they put in their four-digit personal identification code or PIN code, and they money spits out of the machine. It does it. It's not coming out from the bank. It's coming out their, your parents' checking account. Another way is you use a debit card. <clears throat> Same thing when they put in that card out of the bank ATM. You can also use it at Walgreens or CERN. So you can buy things instead of using a credit card, use a debit card. It comes out of your checking account. I don't know how many of your peers have ever done this where they need cash. So they go see a Walgreens or Eckers or HB and they buy something small. And then the cash reg the regist cashier always say, would you like cash back? So they say, yeah, I want cash back. So they put in the code and they get the cash back. They can write a check to buy something. And they can go to the bank and ask, I want my money. Of course, legally, not like, I want my money. And they have a gun pointed to the, I'm talking about legally. <laughs> Uh, so there are different situations here. You're going to tell me when money is deposited withdrawn from a checking account, it is called a transaction. You're going to identify which one is a deposit D and which one's a withdrawal. Debbie paid her rent by writing a $400 check. So withdrawal. She's taking money out of her to pay her landlord. Money is autom automatically transferred into Debbie's checking account from earnings from her job as a deposit. Money coming into her, into her, so deposit. Debbie went shopping for some dog trees. When she checked out, she entered her PIN, or four-digit code, at the register and paid with it. So she's paying money out, so it's a withdrawal. Debbie wanted cash to pay for the cost of a movie ticket. She stopped an ATM machine, entered her code, and took money out. So she's taking not out of the machine, out of her money, so it's withdrawal. Debbie received two checks for her birthday. She went to the bank, filled out a slip, and gave the cash check to the bank teller. So she's going to get money from it. So that's a deposit. Um, you're going to be doing a card sort. So you're going to be getting different examples. And you're going to tell me which one is a deposit or withdrawal. For example, if you receive weekly allowance from parents, that is a deposit. If you do an electronic transfer to pay your bank loan, you're paying something off. That's a withdrawal. If you wrote a check for charity, you're taking money out of you to give someone else. So it's withdrawal. If you have a debit purchase for a birthday gift, I mean, you purchase something, withdraw. And I think that's the only one that's, I think the rest is all withdraw. So, nowadays, when some of your parents may still do this, I personally don't do it, um, because we now have um, online banking. But a lot of people, grandparents, a lot of people do this. They are, when they, they have a checkbook. And in the checkbook, they have a check register. They enter the information there so they know how much money they have left in their checking account. Without doing this, you do have a chance of having something called an overdraft item fee. An overdraft item fee means you're spending over what you have. Is a bank going to let you borrow money from them for free? No, they're not. They're going to charge you a $30 overdraft fee. So you're going to pay back what you borrow plus an extra $30 fee. So let's do number one. On May 26, your balance is $527.96. $527.96. So this is what day was that? It was May 26. Whoops. On May 27th, you wrote a check 107. So May 27th, you wrote a check number 106. So am I depositing or withdrawal? Am I credit me more money? Debit me take out. So I wrote a check, so $226. So I'm taking away $226. By the way, uh, for this one, I 
will let you use a calculator because in real life people use calculators all the time when they are using a uh, when it involves money because I know myself you may say I'm a math teacher but I sometimes worry if I make a mistake and with money I am not playing around with that so if you have five hundred twenty seven dollars and ninety six cents and you take away five twenty two hundred twenty six so five twenty seven ninety six take away two twenty six that means he his balance is now only three hundred one dollars and ninety six cents all right on may twenty eighth you use your debit card at foodland for twenty two dollars and fifty two cents so i spent twenty two dollars and fifty cents on may twenty eighth so that leaves me with only two hundred seventy nine dollars and forty four cents on June 1st you write another check sheesh so that's June 1st you write another check for one hundred fifty six dollars and thirty two cents I'm hoping you're going to be making some money shortly for Bank of Illinois for your car payment this is for car payment uh, this is for food land what happened in 226 this is to your land lord so minus 156 32 so you're left with a hundred twenty three dollars and twelve cents on June 1st so June 1st on June 1st you write a check oh on June 1st you write realize your check to the bank of noise sh should have been a hundred sixty five dollars and twenty three cents so you void the first check and write a new check for a hundred sixty five dollars and twenty three cents oh my goodness gracious so that means we'll have to cancel this out so this cancels out I mean, void me cancels out. It should have been a hundred sixty-five dollars and twenty-three cents. So, with my calculator, I put two hundred seventy-nine dollars and forty-four cents minus a hundred sixty-five dollars and twenty-three cents. So now I'm only left with a hundred fourteen dollars and twenty-one cents. All right, next one on June second. You write a check to Interstate Phone for sixty-two seventy-seven. So sixty-two seventy-seven, June second. This is for check. Sorry, this is for phone. What happened on June first? June first, you wrote a check for car. So minus sixty-two seventy-seven. I am only left with oh no fifty one dollars and forty four cents. I'm hoping I'm getting paid soon. So on June second, you use your ATM to withdraw twenty dollars. Oh goodness gracious! On June second, this is ATM. I took out another twenty dollars. At least be with only thirty one dollars and forty four cents. On June fifteenth. On June 15, your paycheck, yay, you got paid $425 is directly deposit. I don't have to go to the bank, so I'm getting paid. Yay, plus $425. Now I have $476.44. Whoops, $476 On June 15, you use your, eight, you use your debit card at Gifts Plus. So Gifts Plus. What day was that? Uh, June 15. And how much money did we use to spend at Gift Plus? $18.99 for your friend. Well, luckily I got paid because I would have not been able to afford that. Minus $18.99. Now I have $457.45. On June 15, you write a check. So let's list it June 15. I wrote a check. For $246.45, $246.45 uh, to State Ranch for my insurance. So I'm going to put 
describe it, insurance minus 246.45, and that leaves me with exactly $211. All right, I messed up somewhere here. I want to make sure where I messed up here somewhere. All right. I bet you I messed up somewhere here. I think I messed up right here at thirty-one dollars and forty-four cents plus four hundred twenty-five. Ah, it's okay. That's why we have erasers. Erase, 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 erase. So if I have $31.44 and I deposit $425, I have $456.44. I just paid my, oh, that goes right here. Let's erase, erase, erase. It's okay. We learned from our mistakes. And then I pay, went to Gift Plus and bought something for my friend for $18.99. So that leaves me with $437.45. Then I pay my insurance of $246.45. Now I have exactly $191. We're good. On June 22nd, let's list it. June 22nd. What happened on June 22nd? Um, you transfer $100 online from your checking to your saving account. So I took out $100 to savings. So now I only have $91. On June 24th, You use your debit card at gas up to fill up your card. You spend a hundred dollars. So you spent a hundred dollars on gas. That's a lot of gas. Uh oh. If I subtract ninety-one minus a hundred, that leaves me with a negative nine dollar balance. Well, the bank let me borrow that for free. Oh no. <coughs> Excuse me, no way. So the overdraft fee. <coughs> How much was the overdraft fee? $30. So now I am left with a balance of negative $39. Well, that isn't great. Hopefully another check is coming in. But most people get paid at the middle of the month and the end of the month. So <coughs> I'm going to have to borrow money for somebody. So what we learned today is something called deposit. It goes into your account and withdrawal, which goes out of it. 